Hello, Mr. Richards here, and today's algebra lesson is on geometric sequences as exponential functions. Now, before we determine whether each sequence is arithmetic, geometric, or neither, let's flash back to chapter 3 and refresh ourselves what an arithmetic sequence is. Now, an arithmetic sequence is a numerical pattern that increases or decreases at a constant rate called the common difference. And here are two examples of arithmetic sequences. With a 3, 5, 7, 9, you can hopefully see the pattern of plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, so our common difference there is 2. Compare that to 30, 25, 20, 15, where our common difference is minus 5. Now, how does that compare to geometric sequences? A geometric sequence is a sequence in which each term after the first is found by multiplying the previous term by a constant r called the common ratio. And with our sequence 3, 6, 12, 24, hopefully you can see where each term is being multiplied by 2 to get to the next term. Now, determine whether each sequence is arithmetic, geometric, or neither, and explain. Well, 0, 8, 16, 24, 32. Let's see if there's a common difference first. Let's check to see if it's an arithmetic sequence first. And we can look and go, well, from 0 to 8, I'm adding 8. From 8 to 16, I'm still adding 8. From 16 to 24, I'm still adding 8. And from 24 to 32, I'm still adding 8. So this is an example of an arithmetic sequence. Since, for our explanation, the common difference is 8. Now, what about 64, 48, 36, 27? Well, we can check to see if there is a common difference to see if this is an arithmetic sequence. And to get from 64 to 48, we subtract 16. And to get from 48 to 36, we subtract 12. And from 36 to 27, we are subtracting 9. So since we do not have a common difference, then it's not going to be arithmetic. Now we need to check to see if it's going to be geometric. Well, if we start off by rewriting 64, 48, 36, and 27, to go from 27 to 36, let's look at the ratio. So 27 over 36. And will this simplify? Yes, it simplifies by dividing by 9 on top and bottom to 3 fourths. What about from 36 to 48? Well, if we just write our 36 over 48, if we divide by 12 on top and bottom, we can get 3 fourths again. And then from 48 to 64, 48 over 64, this once again simplifies to 3 fourths. So we have a common ratio here. So this is geometric. And for our explanation, the common ratio is 3 fourths. So when you have a common difference, whether you're adding the same number or subtracting the same number, it's arithmetic. When your ratios are common, it's geometric. And there will be times where you'll have sequences that are neither, if you cannot find a common difference or find a common ratio, that would be an example of a sequence that is neither arithmetic or geometric. So now we're going to be asked to find the next three terms in each geometric sequence. Well, our first step 
is to find the common ratio. So if we have 1, negative 8, 64, and negative 512, to get from negative 512 to 64, we can write that as negative 512 over 64. And this simplifies into negative 8. Now let's make sure we check the next ones as well. 64 over negative 8 simplifies into negative 8. And negative 8 over 1 simplifies into negative 8. So we have a common ratio of negative 8. Now what we're going to do with that is to say, okay, for my negative 512, if I go ahead and multiply that by negative 8, I would get 4,096. And if I take that 4,096 and multiply by negative 8, you get negative 32,768. And if you take your negative 32,768 and multiply that by negative 8, you would get a positive 262,100. 44. And so to write our answer out, we have 4,096, and we can use a semicolon to separate these, negative 32,768, another semicolon, 262,144. So we started off by finding the common ratio, and then we multiplied to get our next three terms. Now, what about 40, 20, 10, and 5? Well, let's rewrite this as 40, 20, 10, 5, and look for our common ratios again. Well, from 5 to 10, 5 over 10, which is 1 half, from the 10 to the 20, once again, 1 half. And from 20 to 40, we once again get the 1 half. So 40 times 1 half is 20. 20 times 1 half is 10. 10 times 1 half is 5. So once again, our common ratio here is 1 half. Not negative 1 half, just one half. And so now we can take that last term, which was a 5, and we can multiply it by one half. And now you could work write these in decimals, or you could just keep this as a fraction. I'm going to choose to keep it as a fraction. 5 times one half is 5 halves. And if I take 5 halves and multiply by one half, I get 5 fourths. And if I take 5 fourths and multiply that by 1 half, I get 5 eighths. So my answer here, 5 halves, 5 fourths, and 5 eighths. Now what if we don't want to find just the next three terms, but if we want to find the hundredth term of a sequence? Well, we can use this formula as it says, the nth term a of n of a geometric sequence with first term a1 and the common ratio r is given by the following formula, where n is any positive integer and a1 and r are not equal to zero. So the nth term, which is a n, is going to equal the first term 
times the common ratio to the n minus 1 power, where again the n was the term that you're looking for. Now this might make the most sense if we actually solve a problem like this. So write an equation for the nth term of the geometric sequence and find the indicated term. We're looking for the twelfth term of 1, negative 2, 4, negative 8. Well, once again, our first step is going to be to find the common ratio. So if we rewrite this, 1, negative 2, 4, negative 8, as we work back here, we have negative 8 over 4, which is just negative 2. 4 over negative 2 is also negative 2. And negative 2 over 1 is negative 2. So we have a common ratio of negative 2, which is really important in our sequence. Next, let's write out our formula. A n equals a1 times r to the n minus 1. Now to write the equation for an nth term before we substitute in the twelfth, the twelfth term, we're going to say, okay, a to the nth term is going to equal, we can substitute in the first term now, which is 1 times our common ratio for r, which we found at negative 2, to the n minus 1 power. So n minus 1. And that is our equation we're going to use. That's the first part. Now, let's use that to find the twelfth term. So, a 12, representing the twelfth term, is going to equal 1 times negative 2 to the 12 minus 1 power. Well, that's going to equal 1 times negative 2 to the 11th power. And negative 12, or negative 2 to the 11th power is negative 2,048. And 1 times that is just, well, negative 2,048. So the twelfth term is negative 2,048. So once again, to write an equation, we need to find the common ratio first. And that goes in for r. Our first term is just our first term. Sometimes it's 1, sometimes it's not. And then if we're looking for the twelfth term or the hundredth term, we put that in for n here, subtract 1, do our power, multiply by that first term, and you'll get your answer. Now let's graph a geometric sequence. A 50-pound ice sculpture is melting at a rate in which 80% of its weight remains each hour. Draw a graph to represent how many pounds of the ice sculpture is left at each hour. Well, the first is easy. We have at zero hour, we have 50 pounds. And so we can just start there. But then we can make a table to help us graph the rest. We'll have hours as our x, and we'll have pounds of ice over here as our y. Well, for hour number one, this 80%, that's our common ratio. So we can take the 50 pounds we had at hour one when we started, and multiply that by the 80%, which we're going to represent as the decimal 0.8. And 50 multiplied by 0.8 is 40 pounds. For hour two, we're going to take the 40 pounds, multiply that by 0.8, and that's going to equal 32 pounds. And we can keep going three hours, we would have 32 times the common ratio of 0.8 or 80 percent, and that gets us 25 and 6 tenths. 
for hour four. We have our 25 and 6 tenths left. And 80% of that is going to be 20 and 48 hundredths. For hour five, we'll take the 20 and 48 hundredths and multiply that by the common ratio of 80%. And we end up with 16 and 348 thousandths. And lastly, our graph does go out to six hours, so we might as well do that one. Take your 16 and 348 thousandths. Multiply it one last time by our common ratio of 80%. And we end up with 13 and 1,072 ten thousandths. And now we need to graph. And as we examine our graph here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 to get between our levels of 10 which means each one of these lines represents a difference of 2.5. So just keep that in mind as we graph that each line is actually 2.5. So for our 1, we're going to be at 40 pounds of ice. For our 2, we'll be at 32, which is going to be right about here just below the 32 and a half. Hour three, we'll have 25 and 6 tenths. So that's going to be right above the 25 there. Hour four, 20 and 48 hundredths, so just above the 20. Hour 5, 16 and 348 thousandths. So pretty much in between the 15 and 7 and a half, or 17 and a half, it's kind of right here. And lastly, hour 6, 13 and some change. So a little bit above the 12 and a half out here. And you can see, hopefully, where this is not linear, it's definitely geometric or even an exponential function. And that is it for this lesson on geometric sequences as exponential functions. Good luck.